Syracuse could be getting some key players back in the lineup for this week's matchup against NC State. You are locked on Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome into Locked On Syracuse. I'm Jackson Holzer, and thank you for making us your first listen of every single day here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day, and we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And on today's show, we got some positive news on the injury front for Syracuse football heading into Saturday night's matchup against NC State. Three players could be returning from injury. First, Justice Ross Simmons. Yes, he's actually been back, right? He played last week against UNLV, but Fran Brown mentioned in the last press conference that he could be a full go against the Wolfpack on Saturday night. Then Marcellus Barnes, the true freshman corner, he is expected to be back for Syracuse football as well as Malachi James, which should help the special teams. And then after we go over all the positive injury news for Syracuse football, we'll talk about the NC State quarterback situation since they could be starting one of two options as of this very moment. So tons to look forward to here on today's podcast. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. All right, so let's go over Justice Ross Simmons first. For those that may not know, he is a junior wide receiver and a Colorado State transfer from this offseason. Last year, he had 45 catches for over 700 yards and three touchdowns, which culminated in an All-Mountain West honorable mention selection last season. This was a big-time get for Syracuse football in the transfer portal. All right, he committed after the spring game. It was the second window of the portal, so we didn't get to see him in that one. I was kind of bummed about it, even because they were rumored at that time to be getting him, and I was hoping that it would be before the spring game, but it ended up being about a week after it. Regardless, this was a big-time get for Syracuse when they got him in late April. They had to beat out programs like Florida, Alabama, Florida State, and I know that those programs have had varying degrees of success this season, but... Those are still three big-time programs in college football. And they had to beat out those schools for this kid. So obviously, he is very, very talented. Fran Brown mentioned in the press conference heading into this week against NC State that getting him back in the lineup is like, in NFL terms, getting a a big free agent back. Like, you sign a free agent in the offseason, he's been injured for you, but now he's here. He's back, right? I'm sure a lot of you guys who root for your whatever your favorite NFL teams have had that before. It would be like from it's not exactly apples to apples, but I'm a New York Jets fan, sadly. They got Hassan Reddick in a trade this offseason. If it were to be announced like right now at this very moment that he is coming back and he's actually gonna play. I know that's not injury related though. That would be amazing news. It would be great, it would be terrific. Again, that's a whole separate conversation to what it is with Justice Ross Simmons. For him, it's been injury. But you get the idea. In NFL terms, it's like getting a big free agent in your lineup. And Fran Brown also said, quote, it's like he's off the pup list, which is physically unable to perform, and he's ready to go. He is ready to be unleashed for Syracuse football against NC State, according to Fran Brown. This is why it is so big for Syracuse that they are getting him back, all right? First of all, he was expected to be a big-time contributor for the Orange. He was. I was calling him before the year in training camp. He's this team's number two wide receiver right behind Zed Haynes. Those are the two top receivers. However, he's been dealing with a nagging hamstring injury for a while, right? For the end of training camp, it bled into the regular season. Justice Ross Simmons' first game back was actually against Stanford, but he played limited reps in that one. Barely played at all. I don't even think he got a target. And then he missed the Holy Cross game. He came back last week against UNLV, but again, you barely saw him on the field. They ran almost 100 plays, and I don't even think he played a tenth of them. So he barely played. 
And that is because they have been easing him back from this hamstring injury, I think. I don't know if him missing Holy Cross was due to the hamstring injury or it was something else. But regardless, they've clearly been easing him back the last few weeks. And now it is time for him to be unleashed. And again, why is this so important? Folks, we are entering the meat and potatoes of this schedule for Syracuse football. This is it. This is it. This team is in good position now. They have bounced back from the Stanford loss, right? When they were two and one, and even when they were three and one, because they didn't look good against Holy Cross. I was like, I don't know if this team can contend for the ACC anymore. You're just hoping that they can have a good regular season. Well, you beat UNLV, a ranked team on the road. You got NC State on the road this week. They're favored to win that game, but it's not going to be easy. I'm just pointing out that they're favored. And then the following week, they're playing a ranked team on the road again in Pitt. And I know Pitt has looked very good this season, but hey, I, I'm not saying I'm going to take Syracuse right now. We, we still have a little ways to go for that one, but I, I don't think that that game is not. I think it's winnable. Like, I, I think they can win at Pitt. I'm not, it's not asking, we're not asking this team to go into Georgia and win a game. We're asking them to go into Pitt. It's kind of like how going into UNLV. Yeah, they'll be underdogs in that one, but they can win that game. And when you get justice wrought, you need all hands on deck for the meat and potatoes of the schedule. The passing offense has been very good this season. In fact, it's been record-breaking for Syracuse football. It's been record-breaking. Kyle McCord is on pace to throw for over 40 touchdowns in the regular season alone. And that would shatter the record right now, which I believe is held by Ryan Nassib with 25 or 26. Someone fact-checked me on that. Right, He's having a record-breaking year. So clearly the passing offense is fine, but you need all hands on deck right now. And this is someone who can really, really help you. He can. It gives this team another weapon. Have you ever been like, oh, we have too many weapons on a team? It's like saying you have too many pass rushers. There's no such thing. There's no such thing as having enough weapons. Okay, they have a Ronde Getz and they have Trevor Pena. Zed Haynes is still out with personal reasons and I hope everything's okay on that front. We don't have an update on that. Jackson Meeks has looked really good. And you know, you got LaQuinn Allen out of the backfield. You got Amari Hatcher as well. But another outside threat, in, or another outside threat rather, in Justice Ross Simmons, I think could really help this team. I think it can. He's very good at working underneath. And he can also take the top off the defense. At times when he's running his routes, honestly, it looks like it, he's not putting in any effort. But it's not because he's not putting in any effort. It's that he's making it look effortless if you go watch his if you go watch his highlights. Very, very smooth when you watch him play. So I'm excited. I'm very curious to see how often he plays against NC State and how often he gets targeted against NC State. Because again, we're in the meat potatoes, meat and potatoes of the schedule now. All hands on deck. If Syracuse, again, I'm kind of teasing the poll Friday episode. If Syracuse wants to be a contender, you need pretty much everyone to be a full go. And Justice Ross Simmons, it appears, is going to be a full go finally this week for Syracuse football. He's played very limited two of the past three weeks. It's time for Justice Ross Simmons to be unleashed. So some positive news with Justice Ross Simmons. And guess what? We're staying positive here. We're going to go talk about some defense and some special teams because the Orange are also going to get help on that front with a couple of players returning from injury. All right, Locked On Syracuse fans, it's time for the Roy Player of the Week. The Roy app lets you directly support your favorite athletes, unlike collectives where you make a donation to a general fund. Roy lets you choose the specific athlete you want to support. You back the players you care about, and in return, get exclusive content after the season like personal videos and updates. And the best part, it's risk-free. If the athletes transfer, if the athlete transfers or doesn't create the content, you get your money back. And this week, I'm choosing LaQuint Allen for his four touchdowns against UNLV. But not just the four touchdowns. The most important play he made was breaking that tackle on fourth and one as Syracuse was going in for the tie. Because if he doesn't break that tackle, Syracuse loses that game. And we're having a very different conversation about how the rest of this season can happen for Syracuse. 
when enough of us contribute, it's not just about the dollars. It's about the message we send to LaQuinn Allen together. Our collective support helps keep him connected to our school. Plus, Roy is doing their part to bring fans closer to their schools and athletes with an exciting giveaway. Roy is giving one lucky fan two tickets to any game of their choice in November. Now, here's how you enter. Just download Roy in the App Store or Google Play. Use code Locked On when signing up and you're entered. Are already on Roy? Make a payment to any athlete's campaign and you'll also be automatically entered. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Go to joinroy.com for official rules. Download Roy and try it out. There's no subscription, no recurring fees, and for as little as $10, you can get in the NIL game. Roy, support the players, change the game. Syracuse football is going to get more help on defense and on special teams this week against NC State. And let me remind you guys, the Orange take on the Wolfpack on Saturday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, looking to start 5-1. and one. Let's start off with the defense and why they are getting help back. Well, Marcellus Barnes, a four-star true freshman starting corner who injured himself early in the game against Stanford with back spasms. Then he missed the Holy Cross and the UNLV games. Well, here's the good news. Coach Fran Brown said in his press conference that he expects that Marcellus Barnes will be back in the lineup for NC State. Again, Fran Brown's words, not my words. That is according to Fran Brown. So if he doesn't play, don't come at me. All right. I'm just saying what coach is saying here. This is why it is so big for Syracuse that Marcellus Barnes is coming back. He has been one of the main surprises of not only training camp, but in this season overall. Because, yeah, he's a four-star player, and you can argue that he was the best player that Syracuse recruited in that 2024 recruiting cycle. You can make that argument, okay? You can. Regardless, he's a true freshman, and earning a starting corner spot as a true freshman, I don't care what team you're on, is not easy. I don't care what star you are. Where you're ranked in high school, it's never easy to earn playing time as a true freshman, all right? There are very few, I know it's not cornerback, but there are very few Jeremiah Smiths and Ryan Williams and Kim Coleman's out there or Dylan Rayola's out there, right? It it doesn't normally happen for true freshmen. They don't normally play. But Barnes have been playing really, really well this season. Through the first two weeks, if you go look at pro football focus, he was one of the highest graded defenders on this team through two weeks. And he's a true freshman. So this is not only someone that you can be excited about right now, but you can be excited about going forward in the future as one of the main corners of this team. And think about it. You got Marcellus Barnes and in 2025 recruiting cycle, they just got a four-star in Demetrius Samuel who's coming along. So the future is pretty bright in the defensive back room, a safety in Demetrius Samuel with Marcellus Barnes as a corner. He's obviously been very, very good this season, like I just said. And he's going to be needed. Similar to Justice Ross Simmons, we are in the meat and potatoes of the schedule. I keep on saying meat and potatoes, but you get the point. This is it. Four and one. We got all these ACC games coming up now. We need him, especially against a team like NC State. Think about NC State for a second here. Related to this game. They got... KC Concepcion, one of the better wide receivers in the country. I know he's had a a little bit of a down year. If you look at his stats, they're very interesting because he has 37 catches in six games, but he has barely any yards. Regardless, that is still one of the better receivers in the country, and getting a starting corner back from injury is massive. It's massive for Syracuse. Justin Jolie. He's been a a nice surprise for NC State this season, and although he is a tight end, you still need all hands on deck in the secondary. Right? They they got some good players on NC State. I know they're three and three. I know they've underachieved, but in the preseason, that was a top twenty five team. They got to take them seriously. You don't. You're not a preseason top twenty five team by accident. Right, that shows that the team has talent. They just not they at this moment aren't playing up to their potential. But they still got KC Concepcion. They got Justin Jolie. They got a good running game. You need all your defenders back. They're not going to have Marlo Wax in all likelihood this week. Maybe we see him back for Pittsburgh. 
right? That was expected when they when they announced the six week timetable for Marlo Wax. I laid it out on Twitter. If he comes back aggressively, it would be for this game against NC State. If it's the six weeks, like they're saying, it's Pitt, and if it goes past Pitt, then we're kind of in trouble because then you're past six weeks. But regardless, you need everyone you can. And getting Marcellus Barnes back to help this secondary, which at times has looked pretty poor, is going to be huge for this team. It's going to take a lot of pressure off of Clarence Lewis, who is being asked to be the number one corner right now. He still might not, he still might be the number one corner when Barnes returns. But at the end of the day, it's still less pressure on him to really be able to perform because your number two corner is upgraded regardless. Bottom line. So getting Marcellus Barnes back from injury is so crucial for this team, not only for the rest of the season, but for this week against NC State with their top pass catchers against us. Let's talk about the special teams, shall we? Which has certainly been uh, in the news for the Orange. We know. Now, I mentioned in the post game about the special teams and, and the block punts. We know about that. The block punts have been an issue, obviously. And, and the missed field goals. And one thing that I don't think we've talked about enough, and I've mentioned it in passing, is the kick returns. The kick returns have not been very good the past couple of games, have they? Just by the eye test, they really haven't been that good. Well, one of the reasons for that is their main returner is out right now, but he's expected to be back, and that is Malachi James. They are expected to get their true freshman kick returner back after missing the past two weeks with an injury. He should definitely help the kick return game. I don't don't know if he's going to help the block punts, but again, they had Yassine Willis returning the kicks before him, and nothing against Yassine Willis, but Malachi James is one of the fastest players in college football. Okay, so I'd rather him returning kicks than Yassine Willis, who's more of a power back right now. He's got some wheels. I know, I get it. He's he's super athletic. This is not a disrespect to Yassine Willis. But if you had to ask, who would you rather be a kick returner? Malachi James, the fastest player maybe in college football, or Yassine Willis, you'd probably take Malachi James, and he should definitely help kick returns for Syracuse. Even if he's not getting 30, 40 yards on a return, there's a big difference between the 10-yard line and the 20-yard line. So hopefully Malachi James, him being back, is going to help the special teams, not necessarily on the block punt issue, but on the kick return issue. All right, so once again, two more players coming back from injury this week, Marcellus Barnes on defense and Malachi James. Leave a comment in the comment section below on your thoughts of Syracuse getting potentially three contributors back this week against NC State. Do you think that this increases Syracuse's chances of beating NC State this weekend. Once again, leave a comment in the comment section below. So that about does it with the injury news, but stick around because we're going to talk about the NC State quarterback situation. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Last week, Syracuse football was a six and a half point road underdog to UNLV. Obviously, they ended up covering because, well, They won outright, which was obviously a big win for Syracuse football. And now, going on the road to NC State, they are actually favored by a few points. So check it out on FanDuel. That's FanDuel.com. Who is going to start for NC State at quarterback against Syracuse football on Saturday night? Let's talk about it. And there are two choices, one of which is far more likely to start than the other, but because this first player that we're going to talk about has technically not been ruled out, we're going to mention him. And that is Grayson McCall. Grayson McCall is a sixth year senior and a coastal Carolina transfer in his final year of eligibility. And so far for the Wolfpack this year, he has played in four games, 
But if you look at his stats, you might be wondering why they're so down. Well, it's because he's been dealing with injuries this entire season. He has been knocked out of a couple of games to begin this year. And he's also been up and down when he has played. He suffered an upper body injury against Louisiana Tech. And then last week against Wake Forest, I I hope you guys didn't see the replay of it, but it was just a, he suffered a brutal, violent hit against Wake Forest. It was one of the worst hits I've ever seen a quarterback actually take. One of the worst ones where you just, you just gasp when you see it happen. And he got, he got popped. It was not good. He ended up getting stretchered off the field. Fortunately, from what I'm reading, it seems like all good news in the hospital for him. All the test results came back clean for Grayson McCall. So obviously we're wishing him a speedy recovery. I get it. He's not on Syracuse, but still it was, you wish everyone to be fully healthy. That was, that was a brutal, brutal hit. And I'm not going to sit here and call it dirty. I don't think it was. I just think it was incredibly violent and he got hurt. And that is the unfortunate reality sometimes in football. I'm just glad that he is okay. And according to NC State, I guess in terms of football news, he hasn't been ruled out for the season. And because he hasn't been ruled out for the season, I wouldn't rule him out for this game. But I highly doubt, highly doubt, they will trot him out there against Syracuse this week. I highly, if they do, it would feel like malpractice. It really would. Maybe he, I I think regardless, I I don't, I I do not see a situation where they play him. But the fact that he's not ruled out for the season, the fact that he hasn't been ruled out for this game at right now, I'm recording this at 12.05 Eastern on Tuesday. So if you're watching this at six and there's already news, then sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll pin a comment in the comment section. But he hasn't been ruled out as of right now. So maybe Grayson McCall plays, but I highly doubt. That means who is going to be the quarterback really for NC State this week? It's C.J. Bailey. In all likelihood, a true freshman quarterback, obviously. he's He's been pretty decent for NC State. I've, I've liked what I have seen. And if you're an NC State fan that has come across this channel, I think you guys might have a bright future with C.J. Bailey. Because he's looked pretty good right now as a true freshman. You look pre- you look good at quarterback as a true freshman. Chances are he's going to be good for a while. So if you're an NC State fan, it's not all doom and gloom. And for Syracuse, kind of similar to the UNLV situation, but not really. It's not, again, apples to apples. But remember before UNLV with the whole Matt Sluka And now Syracuse is going to face a backup quarterback. Does that make the game easier? Well, we found out, no, it doesn't make it easier. In fact, you can argue that UNLV is a better team without Matt Sluka, that Haj Malik Williams is a better quarterback in general, and he should have been starting the whole time. With NC State, I wouldn't say that they're any easier, that that they got easier because they're playing C.J. Bailey. C.J. Bailey has looked pretty good for the Wolfpack this season. He's thrown the ball over 100 times because, again, Even when Grayson McCall has played in a game, he's been knocked out of a couple of games this season. So that means C.J. Bailey has had to play. And he has started a game as well. I believe he started the the Clemson game. And I know they got obliterated at Clemson, but Bailey looked okay. Bailey looked fine. He's thrown the ball over 100 times. That's pretty good. That's a decent enough sample. And he has completed over 65% of his passes. He can also scramble a little bit too. This is not going to be an easy matchup for Syracuse football. I get it. They might be playing a backup quarterback, but kind of similar to UNLV where that backup quarterback is pretty good too. He's under scholarship too. I get he's a true freshman. We'll talk about the keys to maybe getting him later on in the week. But just from a preliminary perspective and just looking ahead a little bit, doesn't make me feel any better or worse that C.J. Bailey is the quarterback. Am I confident that Syracuse can win this game? Absolutely. But I'm not going to sit here and be like, yeah, that got easier because Bailey's playing over McCall. Again, in all likelihood. In all likelihood. I, I sincerely doubt they'll try out, they'll trot McCall on the field after last week. I, I, I highly, highly doubt it. Regardless, I think we're going to see C.J. Bailey for NC State on Saturday. 
a mobile quarterback who can also throw it a bit with a few weapons. It's a good thing we got Marcellus Barnes back from injury this week. And thank you for making Locked On Syracuse your first listen today. For your second listen, check out the Locked On ACC podcast, Alex Donald and Kenton, G- and Kenton Gibbs. He's actually the host of Locked On Wolfpack. They're going to keep it real and they're going to bring you the truth, whether you like it or not, about whatever team is in the ACC and Syracuse. You might like it, you might hate it, but regardless, they're going to tell you how they actually feel. And speaking of which, at this very moment right now, I'm actually recording the squad episode for this week, which is going to air on Thursday. I'm looking forward to the squad episode. It's going to be a good one because it's always good when Syracuse wins, right? That'll be on my channel, but it'll also be on Locked On ACC. And regardless, after you're done watching this or listening to this, find Locked On ACC on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. Now, coming up for the rest of this week, we got Neil Adler from Inside the Loud House for tomorrow's podcast on Thursday. I'm going to try to get the NC State guys on for a crossover episode. If not, it is what it is. We'll do more of a deeper dive into NC State on Thursday. It's a deep dive on Thursday into NC State. Hopefully it's with those guys because it'll be good to talk to Grayson Boone and Kenton Gibbs from there. Having said that, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all so much for listening. If you like this video, click that like button. And if you really liked it, subscribe to the channel, turn on those notifications so you know right away when I am dropping the next podcast. And everyone, take care.